Hi everyone, it's Dr. Chan here with another episode of uh, Urology Made Simple. One of the viewers had requested that I do a little talk on recurrent urinary tract infections. So today, what I'll kind of touch briefly on is symptoms of urinary tract infections, some of the risk factors for urinary tract infections, and most importantly, how do you prevent getting recurrent urinary tract infections in women? All right, so let's get started. So if you're a woman and have had a lot of urinary tract infections before, then these symptoms are probably pretty familiar with you. They're burning with urination, frequency and urgency of urination, sometimes blood in the urine, foul smelling urine, fevers and chills if it gets really bad, and also pain. So next, I'm gonna talk about what some of the risk factors for recurrent urinary tract infections are in women. These might include the use of spermicides or diaphragm for birth control, uncontrolled diabetes, which can sometimes be manifested by having to go to the bathroom a lot, urinary incontinence, which means leakage of urine uh, when you don't want to, sometimes when you cough or laugh or sneeze, Usually this is pretty common in women who have had vaginal deliveries in the past. Cystocele, which is a name for uh, the prolapse of the bladder out of the vagina. This is once again common with women who have had vaginal deliveries in the past with their children. Pelvic prolapse. A cystocele is a type of pelvic prolapse where the organs fall from their usual place in the body and come out through the vagina. Unlike a cystocele, you can also have the uterus or the cervix uh, prolapse, as well as the rectum. Urinary retention is another risk factor. In women, it's a little bit less common to have urinary retention than men, just because there's not a prostate in the way, but it does happen in some instances. The idea behind how urinary retention leads to recurrent urinary tract infections is that just imagine you know a toilet and you have all this urine in it and it doesn't flush uh, well over time that that urine that just kind of sits there and doesn't get flushed out of the way ends up developing bacteria in it a little bit more easily finally the last one is postmenopausal vaginal atrophy after menopause, there's just a lot less estrogen in the body compared to before, and the lining of the vagina just becomes a lot weaker. Next, we're gonna talk about how to prevent getting recurrent urinary tract infections, what some of the different strategies that you can employ, as well as some easy behavioral things that you can kind of put into practice to kind of help reduce the number of times that you get a urinary tract infection. So the first thing that we'll talk about when trying to prevent urinary tract infections is the use of spermicides or diaphragm for birth control. Now, in this day and age, I hardly see anyone using these things for birth control. But if you are, there's always alternate means such as condoms or oral contraceptives. So just switch over to those. Next, we'll talk about postmenopausal vaginal atrophy. A lot of times women are aware that they have this when uh, intercourse is painful, the uh, lining of the vagina is just a lot uh, more atrophic and thinned out. Where estrogen therapy, specifically topical estrogen therapy with something like estrogen cream or Premarin cream, is that the estrogen operates in the local area to kind of make it a lot more healthy and more resistant to bacteria. Now there's uh, some contraindications that are really important to make sure that you don't have, namely breast cancer or endometrial cancer. Also, estrogen therapy has sometimes been implicated in increased risk of heart attack or cardiovascular events. Now this is more likely to be seen with oral estrogen therapy, and fortunately, oral estrogen therapy 
doesn't have the same benefit for helping to prevent recurrent urinary tract infections as the topical uh, estrogen creams do. An easy way to help prevent urinary tract infections is just increasing your water intake. There was this uh, study that just came out in 2018 which showed that women, if they up the amount of glasses of water that they drank from five up to 11 glasses a day, they actually cut down the number of infections they had by almost 50%. So this is something simple that uh, takes a little bit of uh, discipline to do, um, but it's an easy fix uh, to reduce how many times you're getting urinary tract infections. Avoid constipation. This is another easy behavioral fix that can kind of help with recurrent urinary tract infections. Because there's so much stool that's so close to the vagina, a lot of times if people end up getting very constipated, this can lead to a lot more infections. There's a couple of strategies that you can do to prevent getting constipated. The easiest would be to drink more fiber, um, fruits. However, if none of those work, uh, the safest that I've come across is using Miralax, uh, which is just mixed into water. The nice thing about this is that it's titratable, so that if you aren't getting much results with just like one capful of Miralax a day, then you can actually go up to two the next day, maybe up to three, basically until you start having a good bowel movement or to the point where you start having diarrhea, then just kind of dial it back a little bit so that you're not taking so much. Next, I'm gonna talk about some of the drug-related strategies that we have available to prevent infections. The first is using prophylactic antibiotics on a daily basis. Normally, I don't like doing this just because in my mind, having patients on antibiotics all the time just kind of helps select for antibiotic resistant bacteria. And over time, it may cause these bacteria to just become resistant to everything. The way it works is that you take a daily antibiotic for the range of 6 to 12 months at a time and then just stop it and see if, if the recurrent urinary tract infections continue. This is sort of my last ditch effort when everything else that I've tried doesn't work very well. Along the same lines of prophylactic antibiotics is the strategy called self-start therapy. So for my patients who have pretty uncomplicated urinary tract infections and they know when they're getting an infection pretty consistently, then a lot of times I'll give them antibiotics with refills so that they can go and just basically fill the prescription and just start on a three or five day course of antibiotics whenever they feel like they have a urinary tract infection. Next, I want to talk a little bit about some of the more holistic approaches to preventing urinary tract infections. I know in the area where I'm at in Marin County, people really like to live a healthy lifestyle and avoid being on too many medications. So the ones that kind of pop to mind initially are cranberry and D-mannose. Uh, you've probably seen these being touted as things that are good to help prevent urinary tract infections. The way that cranberry works is there is a compound in it called proanthocyanidins, which kind of help bind some of the receptors on the bacteria. D-mannose is a similar kind of function. Uh, you ingest the stuff and then it kind of binds to the bacteria so that it's just a little bit less likely to interact with the bladder walls. Now, the data for either of these, cranberry or D-mannose, none of them are convincingly positive that they're doing anything. Uh, however, like some studies do suggest that there is some benefit. And I think you know, there's no harm to, to taking this stuff, so it's, it's worth a try. 
The specific type of cranberry supplement that I found to be the most effective is one called Allura. It tends to have the highest concentration of this uh, compound pro and the cyanidin uh, compared to a lot of the over-the-counter formulations that you can buy at your local uh, pharmacy or grocery store. So I usually like to kind of recommend this one if, if people want to try uh, a cranberry supplement. Uh, finally, the last one I wanted to talk about is a compound called methenamine. This is kind of my go-to strategy for preventing urinary tract infections. This is a drug that's been around for decades, so it's nothing new, uh, but a lot of people I think haven't heard about it. But the way it basically works is that uh, this methenamine gets converted into formaldehyde in your urine. The nice benefit of this is that the formaldehyde is not an antibiotic, but it will help sterilize the urine without having any of the issues of antibiotic resistance that you would see with taking antibiotics on a daily basis. Usually with methenamine, it's helpful to, to take vitamin C along with it. That just kind of helps the, uh, the compound get converted into formaldehyde a little bit more effectively. This is something that you take on a daily basis. I've had some patients take this stuff on a, a long-term basis uh, without any complications. And similar to the prophylactic antibiotics, usually what I like to do is uh, keep patients on it for somewhere in the range of three to six months and then take them off of it and, and see if their infections come back. If they do, I, I put them back on it. But if they don't and they've kind of gotten over um, their spate of recurrent urinary tract infections, then they can effectively stay off of it. Once again, uh, this is what I feel is kind of the most effective option out of the ones that, uh, that I've tried and has kind of the least amount of uh, side effects just because it's not an antibiotic. Well, thanks again for watching uh, this episode of Urology Made Simple on recurrent urinary tract infections. As always, please subscribe to our channel um, to be updated on further topics. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if there's any videos or topics that you would love to learn a little bit more about, just write it down in the comments section and, and we'll make a video on it in the future. All right, thanks.